Friday. Yeah, that's right. We're back at it again. Top five everything this week. We're like bulls on parade. It's all about anger. It's all about hatred. It's all about things that grind your gears. The top five things that grind our gears. And nothing ground my gears more than DJ rooting the cuisine top five early on. Uh, so he's back to try and redeem himself. And hopefully one of his top five things that grinds his gears is diner food again. So, yeah, uh, DJ, you, you have anything to say uh, before we go ahead and start here? Or uh, do you just want to hop into your, your number five? Well, I think I think you just uh, ruined a great option there, Ronnie. You could have used me yeah. as one of your gear grinders, but... <laughs> Happy to be back. Hope I do a little bit better this time. I think this topic is uh, something I can get into a little bit more. I haven't been able to sleep for days. I've just been sitting there thinking about how angry I get at all these things. So <laughs> I'm drinking whiskey. I'm ready to get angry. All right. Well, uh, without further ado, why don't you just go ahead and uh, hop into your uh, number five and release some of that anger. So I tried to like come up with stuff that wasn't involved like didn't involve people but everything i came up with is is people related so i think i just kind of don't like people um and i came up with so many things that i had to kind of put them in categories rather than doing just like an individual list so number five for me is parents parents grind my gears parents at parties parents at sporting events parents everywhere all they do is talk about their kids they don't want to talk about anything else they want to talk about school at sporting events you have the, the <laughs> overzealous parents that scream at their kid the whole time uh parents are just the worst they just want to take pictures of their kids constantly so i'm going to start it off number five parents grind my gears i'm gonna have to totally disagree here with you dj i mean parents are fantastic I mean, they're raising the next generation to be, you know, uh, fitting members of societies. I mean, I know some great parents. My parents are great. Danny and Sophie are great parents. You and Lauren are great parents. Your father's a great guy. Ronnie's parents are great. Lots of great parents all the way around. I can't really think of any bad parents. So I'm going to go ahead and completely disagree with this topic. Yeah, I mean, um, definitely disagree here. You're damn right I talk about my kid all the time. But I'll be fair and tell, like, when she's crazy, too. I'll bring up those stories. Like, I'm not, I'm not like, a just, like, she's an angel parent. Like, she does some whack shit, yo. Um, but that's part of life, and I think it's, like, a big part of life is, like, that, right? That's, like, such a huge accomplishment, I feel, to, like, raise somebody and not have them die on your watch, <laughs> especially that first year. Um, so like, I'm going to definitely disagree, like, you know, definitely, you know, for me, um, you know, it depends, you have to like, you're going to get more specific if you really want, you know, like helicopter parents might be, you know, a, a better way to describe uh, somebody that I would maybe dislike a little bit, but you know, like I'm somewhat, I could be somewhat like that too. So I'm all about being an active and involved parent. So I'm going to disagree with this, Ronnie. Yeah, DJ, your uh, your redemption tour here is off to a rocky start. I'm gonna go ahead and disagree as well. Uh, parents are great. I mean, without your parents, you wouldn't even be here. Um, also, you're complaining about parents not finding anything interesting to talk to you about. Well, first off, they probably don't have any hobbies because their hobby is parenting. So that's all they have to talk about. That's all it's new. You don't have to tell me. And yeah, and, and then second off, maybe you're just disinteresting, and they're like, "Oh, what the hell am I gonna talk to this fucker about? Oh, let's talk about kids. We both have kids, so maybe it's your fault. You never know." So uh, I'm gonna disagree with you. I know a lot of parents, and they all seem fine. Uh, so yeah, sorry, sorry, DJ. I, I agree with Danny. You should have been more specific. Like, you know, the parent that has their kids run around and break shit and doesn't do anything. You know, that would have been great. Uh, helicopter parent. Um, so they're different. I guess there are parents I don't like. So you're turning, general, you're turning, Ronnie. You're turning. What's a helicopter head. parent? They just like hover around the kids. They don't <clears> touch <throat> anything, and you know, oh, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. You know, they can't let the kid be. You know. I thought that was a Kobe Bryant joke. I was like, geez. Oof. 
Oh, my God. All right. I guess we're done. <laughs> we're done for the week, everyone. So we'll see you next Ow. week. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. I guess we're, we're up to Ryan's number five. All right. We'll keep it going with that great one. Uh, I'm going to go with people at Chipotle who don't have their order ready. I mean, I'm standing in line at Chipotle for like five minutes. The person in front of me is talking on their cell phone the entire time. It's finally time to make their order. They're like, hold on a second. Now, what do I want? I mean, you had all this time to get your order ready. Now you're making everybody behind you wait. I mean, you've got like two options anyway. What's so fucking hard to order? I mean, don't even get in line if you're not ready to pull the trigger when it's your turn to order. So people who don't have the order ready is my number five. Yeah, I mean, I get this one to a certain extent for sure. I mean, like it's almost like you're the soup Nazi to in the uh, modern day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like especially with like nowadays, it's like yeah, you know, that menu is fucking huge. It's not like it's like you know, oh, I can't read it or whatever. It's like, nah, dude, like that menu is huge and like everywhere. So you better get your stuff ready. I mean. What's the point of like waiting in line? I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it's definitely like people that are like having a convert, like they're having, having a conversation, like this is some kind of like their part of their outing is waiting in line. It's like, yo, focus on what we're supposed to be doing, and let's get to the point where you can be chilling at your table. So, yeah, this one definitely grinds my gears. I don't need whiskey to get fired up, yo. That I need the opposite. I try to calm myself down as much as possible for the rest of the world's sake. So this definitely grinds my gears. I'm already getting fired up. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about at the end there, man. That was good. Um, uh, I, I kind of agree with you. I don't agree with you specifically with Chipotle. They got a huge menu. You know, maybe you want to try something new. Maybe you know you have some eye problems you can't see, and you got to wait till you get out there. Like there's no reason to be super prepared uh, ahead of time, and you know it, it can be a little annoying, but Every Chipotle burrito comes with a side of Corona, or not coronavirus, but norovirus, because it gave me norovirus. And I haven't been to Chipotle since. So I hate it. But if you expanded this to people who are in line in front of you and unnecessarily taking too long, like the old lady that's trying to save a nickel off a of toilet paper with a coupon she clipped out of, you know, the newspaper or some crap like that. And I agree with you. I give you a nickel, lady. Just get the hell out of here. Let me get through the line. So I'm I'm gonna semi agree with you here. So I I completely agree, Ryan. This is an excellent choice. Danny and Ronnie saying Chipotle's menu is huge. They've had the same four things on their menu for 15 years. I think they added like one new meat option, and you can get queso dip now. Who who goes to Chipotle that doesn't have their order memorized? The same thing they get every time, and it. If you are a, a newbie to Chipotle, you've been sta- the line's always long. You've been standing in line forever. Like, how have you not made your decision by this point? Um, and I, just the whole, you know, when people make you wait because they're being stupid, that that alone grinds my gears. But narrowing it down to specifically Chipotle because it happens so often, I think it's an excellent choice, Ryan. Wow. All right. Well, I guess we'll move on to my number five. And I had. A couple, uh, I drive a lot, right? So um, there were multiple things that I felt like uh, grinds my gears when I'm driving. Um, And I definitely could have put multiple things on the list. Uh, I chose to go specifically with late mergers. Late mergers fucking grind my gears like a motherfucker. Um, So much so that um, like I know that people do this because I drive so much and I know exactly where in my drive, like where this is going to happen. A lot of times it happens for me, uh, fit on uh, 50 going into on, getting onto 495. Um, but it happens all the time. I'll have them 495 all the time. People going all fast, like right up and not like, it's not like you got my, you know, your exits in a mile and they try to get it the last minute. <clears throat> what I like to do is I like to sucker them in and I, I like, pretend that there's a space enough space in front of me for them to merge over and then i zoom up real quick in the car and i look over at them right when they're doing it and then they have to get in behind me um so yeah people don't like sometimes don't like to ride with me 
but they grind my gears. That thing is just makes me so mad. So that's my number five is the late mergers. Fuck y'all. Yeah, I'm going to have to completely disagree with you here, Danny. Uh, late mergers or make the world go round. If everyone got over before their exit a mile ahead of time, there'd be more shifting than there needs to be. You got slow people because they're leaving these huge gaps that are already merged over. That's for fast people like me to zoom in. They're doing it because they're slow. And I don't want to be stuck behind slow people. Listen, the fact that it's already backed up is because of slow people like that. Now, fast people like me shouldn't have to suffer for slow people like that. So if I need a late merge to get ahead of some of these slow pokes, I'm doing it. Completely disagree. DJ, what do you think? I'm 50-50 on it. Um, I I pull the same move Danny does where I make them think they have a spot and then, nope, not anymore. I, I scoot up. But I'm also the person that does the late merge when I'm stuck in traffic or in a rush because I hate fucking sitting in traffic. So I guess uh, depending on which lane I'm in, I either totally disagree or totally agree. Yeah, late mergers are totally pieces of shit. I mean, they just sit there they have a thousand feet to get over and then they fly by 20 cars and then they have to sit there to merge. And I love when that person passed me and I get up there just so I can stare at them as I pass them by. And they look at me like I'm a dick. I'm like, no, you're the dick and it backfired. So fuck you, late merger. Got what's coming to you. So great number five. Uh, that, was, that was the best one so far. Hopefully mine... Uh... Mine does a little bit better, but uh, so my number five is people who don't eat the crust on their pizzas. People, when you order a pizza, you're ordering bread with sauce and cheese. That's all you're getting, right? You get some toppings or whatever. The crust is the pizza. It's the best part. Why do you think you're so cool? It really grinds my gears, people that think that they're too good for crust. Like it's, it's not flavorful enough. It's the best part of the pizza. Eat the fucking crust. Don't grab another piece. You're not done with your piece. It's similar to people who say they eat chicken wings and they just like take three bites off it and there's meat everywhere and they move on to the next one. It's bullshit. Finish your damn food. It's worth its weight in gold. Pizza's delicious. Eat your goddamn crust. Yeah, I'm going to have to say this one's terrible. Um, <laughs> pizza is often, or I'm sorry, crust is often the worst part of the pizza. Some places do it good, and if they do it good, like, I, I like the crust, but most places, crust sucks. It's like rubber. It's tasteless. So I, a lot of times, will not eat the crust. Um, I'm with you on the chicken wing thing. You got to finish the chicken wings. You're, why are you going to eat half the chicken and not all the chicken? But for pizza, the crust is it's a lot, a lot of times the worst part, so I leave it behind. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and eat the crust every time, but I agree with DJ <clears throat> that you know, crust is often the worst part of the pizza. It's, you know, it's the part that gets burnt the most. I mean, it just, you know, I was eating some Ronnie Dar pizza this weekend. I mean, that crust was just tore up. It was all burnt up. Everybody was throwing it aside. So maybe this is why he chose it as his number five. He's heard like some personal opinions are coming in. Yeah, I mean, I. I mean, to say that the crust is the best part of the pizza is one is the most ridiculous statement made on this show. <laughs> part of the pizza that's good is the shit with the cheese on it, son. I mean, you, you, are you out of your mind? What is wrong with you? Um, and you know what? You know what crust is? Crust is just like crust on a like a sandwich. Look, I'm a I'll eat it. I'm not gonna like. I like. I like that actually. Like I like usually like. I've gotten some. I mean, recently I've gotten lucky. I think crust around me have been good. But, I mean, it's, it isn't the best part of the pizza. And for someone to, like, leave just that, I mean, I would rather them, like, it would be crazy if, some, if it was, like, oh, I ate the crust and left the inside <laughs> uh, part of the pizza, which is what you're saying is not as good as the crust. <laughs> now, that would be, that would really grind my gears. So, I'm going to disagree with uh, the crust on this one. It's Can't all just crust. Like can they make an all crust pizza already? Yeah, why why are you yeah. put the cheese and sauce on? Right? Uh, bread, it's called breadsticks. I mean, <laughs> the crust is on the bottom. You're eating the crust already. What the hell's wrong with the end? It's like bread. Like, what the hell's wrong with the crust? There's nothing wrong with it. Terrible choice. Nothing man. wrong. You guys are all wrong. 
I guess we go on to DJ's number four. Now we establish you're all wrong. All right, so number four, I'm going to do uh, excessive reactions in a group text. People that every time somebody says something, they like it, they heart it, they exclamation it, they question it. You pick up your phone and it says your group text has 80 messages. You open it up, it's 73 thumbs up and three actual texts. The math might be a little off there, but it's ridiculous. I think I think like a 15 to one or a, maybe a 12 to one uh, text ratio is good to go. But I'm in some group chats looking at you, Connor Beamer, where <laughs> two to one reaction to, to text ratios it's I, I'm I'm here for the text. I'm not here for the likes. And then the likes on the likes, it just gets out of hand. So that's that's number four for me. It grinds my gears. I mean, Deej, have you not realized what's happened with social media in the last 15 years? Everything in life is about validation. It's about getting that like. It's about getting that thumbs up. You know, if I make a comment and Ronnie doesn't thumbs it up, how can I know it was a good comment? How can I feel content with myself? You know, sometimes I just sit there waiting. I'm like, it's been 10 minutes and Connor Beamer hasn't loved this, you know, which hasn't happened yet. Thank God. Connor's <laughs> always throwing up some love for the group text. But if I don't get that validation, I can't sleep at night. I need it. I crave it. So I, I, I love throwing some support to your friends. Yeah, I mean, um, what grinds my gears in that those group texts is like the person that doesn't have like the iPhone or whatever. But I don't know if it's their fault. Like Andy Vogel, for example, is like the only dude in the nation that doesn't like have an iPhone apparently. So like, it's like stop including them on group texts or <laughs> like why can't we just like, shouldn't the be friends. other? Why can't like why why does it like why can't they just figure it out? Like you know what I'm saying? Like why does it have to like they have to like spell it out like type it out all the time like these two companies or three companies can't work together so that we're not fucking like seeing that shit constantly it's got to drive them crazy too like every group text i'm in i literally fucking just i put it that shit on silent like I, I i go in and check it because i can't handle like i'm working and shit and like there's like 50 things popping up on my phone i look like an idiot you know what i mean like what's happening uh yeah i definitely like agree like to the with that like whole concept of you know, the this just gets excessive. Uh, yeah, so you said excessive, right? You didn't say like just... excessive. I'm okay. Like I said, a 12 to 1, a 15 to 1 ratio, I'm cool with that. Some yeah. comments deserve a reaction. Yeah, okay. So I agree with the that, the excessiveness. I think my excessiveness, my definition of excessiveness and yours is different because I kind of agree with Ryan. You actually, before, when you first said this, I was on your side, DJ, but Ryan actually completely destroyed your argument for me because he's right. Like, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, I send really stupid texts in that group chat primarily on purpose, and I want people to laugh at it. But half the time, you guys are just laughing but not reacting. I don't know, except for Connor. He's always laughing at it. Sometimes he does a ha-ha reaction and then types ha-ha-ha, which is like <laughs> double great. And I really appreciate it. And I'm just like, I'm sitting there in the morning fuming. I'm like, I sent this at 10 p.m. last night and no one said anything. And I just see that ha 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 from Connor. And I'm like, excellent. I've done my good deed in the group chat for the day. So sorry, DJ. But you're wrong. So <laughs> we'll go ahead and, and move on to Ryan's number four. All right. So for my number four, I'm going with... Uh... Ariana Grande. I mean, can you fucking shut up, Ariana Grande? I mean, every time one of this chick's songs come on, I just want to fucking Van Gogh myself. I mean, she was like the fourth best character on Victorious. How did you get your own career? I mean, I know I'm part of a Victoria Justice GIF text group. You know who has a stupid Ariana Grande gift text group? Nobody. Maybe Connor. <laughs> no. So fucking uh, Ariana Grande, you know, Mac Miller's dead because of you. And that's why you're my number four. Man, pooping on, just bring up a lot of death in this episode. Kind of brings, <laughs> brings me down. 
uh, when I was really getting my anger was really getting me going. Now you just kind of d- making me depressed. Um, yeah, I don't know about this. She got a really hot song right now with Lady Gaga that I love. Uh, and, you know, talk about raining on me and shit. You know what I'm saying? That song is 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 the tits. So I, I don't know that I like a lot of her like solo music, but I do uh, tend to like songs where she's like a feature on it. Um, other than like, yeah, like other than that, I don't really know much about her. Um, I don't, you know, Victoria Justice, you know, got me. So Ronnie. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm going to have to, to disagree with you here, Rye. Uh, you know, I'm also part of a possibly same Victoria Justice GIF <clears throat> group. Uh, and there's not that many Victoria Justice GIFs, but there are a shit ton of Ariana Grande GIFs. And the reason is because one of them is a good singer and the other one's Victoria Justice, who got very jealous at Ariana Grande. That's all you need to know. I mean, if Victoria Justice is jealous because of you, then you really made it because she's really made it. And, you know, Ariana Grande is a nice person. I mean, other than licking that donut that one time and killing Mac Miller um, and having her concert bombed by a jihadist. I mean, she's been a, a pretty good person to people. She she wishes people well. She doesn't get into any beef or anything like that. Um, I kind of... I, I kind of don't want my my dad really likes her, and I don't want him like, like listening to those songs because he like sings them. I don't think he really knows the meanings of them because he was singing side to side once. I was like, could you please stop singing that? That's that's terrible. So I like her. Sorry, Ryan. Disagree. So <clears throat> I don't know what a GIF is, and I definitely don't know who Ariana Grande is. I've uh, I've heard the name for sure. I know she's famous. I know she's a singer. If one of her songs came on right now, I'd have no idea it's her. Uh, you mentioned some shows she's in, I think. Never heard of that show. Never seen it. So I don't know shit about her. My kids probably listen to her. So I guess she's all right. But she did kill Mac Miller, I guess, which is pretty unfortunate. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I don't have much to offer on this one. Don't really know much about her. How do you not know what a GIF is? What is <laughs> doing? Yeah. Do you not see the animated pictures we send in the group text all the time? That's a GIF. I think you're confusing GIFs and GIFs, Ronnie. No, it's not pronounced GIF. It's a GIF. Anyways. Hold on, I have to add a new thing to my list. Man, you're starting to grind my gears here, DJ. (laughs) We'll go on to number number four for for you. Put Ray back on. Let's do this. All right. So I'll move on to my number four before it gets hot. Good Good thing we're not in person this week. Um, So my number four is a really good one. This one really grinds my gears. Um, This My number four is smart people who have to make sure that everybody knows that they're the smartest person in the room like no one gives a shit yo you're fucking super annoying first of all no one cares how many math equations or how many books you fucking read that's like someone talking about how many miles they've run like no one gives a shit you know what i'm saying like you're uninteresting that's so you have to like pretend that you're the you know like to be interesting that you have to be smart and it's like, it doesn't make you interesting. Um, in fact, in front of these people, what I like to do is act really, really stupid. And I have to re- ask really stupid question, questions because it seems to piss them off. Because uh, re- they start to realize, oh, maybe he's making fun of I'm, that I'm being an asshole about being a smart person. Um, so, yeah, smart people, you know, just watch yourself. You know, no one gives a shit that you're smart. And, I mean, be interesting in other ways. Ronnie. Now, now, Daniel, I'm going to go ahead and uh, disagree with you here. Um, one of my favorite philosophers, Voltaire, you maybe you heard of him once, once said that intelligence is the breath of life. And if you actually look at other parts of the world, such as the West uh, Andes Mountains, where the Incans uh, were, they used to eat something called the grain of the mother. It's called quinoa. Now, fantastic grain, protein and carbohydrate all in one, not many plants can do that, so they can consider it a superfood. I don't know if you knew that, but is this what you were anyways. talking about, Danny? <clears throat> all right, DJ, don't interrupt me. All right, that grinds Excuse my gears. Me. Uh, so, anyways, um, yeah, you know, a lot of people think, you know, and a lot of scholars think that intelligent people 
are the only reason that we have things like computers and are able to zoom chat. And their mathematical equations, uh, you know, I know a few uh, E equals MC squared, uh, A squared plus B squared is C squared, Pythagorean theorem. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of other ones. So, you know, it's 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 funny you say that and you would attack uh, a whole group of people like that, but I really wish you could re reconsider. Yeah, I, I like this one, Danny. Um, you get people that go on these like way too long rants about quinoa and equations and shit like that, like... We get it. You read a book. We don't need to know everything in the book. We've read books, too. We just choose not to talk about it. I'm cool with smart people. I like smart people. But don't rub it in your face. Right. Exactly. Just be smart and move on. So, yeah, I like it, Danny. Kind of kind of mixed here. I, I get what you're saying. Uh, people who, like, use big words just for the sake of using big words kind of annoy me. But, you know, I had this friend, Ronnie, who uh, would tape uh jeopardy every day and then when he was dating this girl monica he'd show the day before his episode and play it like it was live and he'd just answer every question so that she thought he was really smart which worked out and he ended up marrying her that's why we got monica in our lives which i love so if he's got to do something that grimy just to uh, you know seem smart does the you know ends justify the means and i'll say yes so yeah ryan that's a good point uh my my you know one of my favorite authors david thoreau once said he who tries not does not try so thank you very much for that ryan uh i guess it's up to my number four uh, <laughs> and something that really gr grinds my gears and i'm sure you all can relate are people who fucking show up late to Zoom meetings. I cannot <laughs> believe this shit. We had a Zoom meeting last week, and it started real late. I forget why. Uh, you know, this is coming from someone who's super punctual. I've never been late to anything in my life. Um, you know, I, I showed up when my mom was ready to have me uh, be born. Uh, I showed up to my wedding on time, which was kind of tough because I was hungover for my wedding the day before. Uh, but I made it. And, uh, you know, and, and other things, you know, so, uh, you know, being punctual, being on time uh, is the courteous thing to do. It's the intelligent thing to do. Um, and anyone that doesn't do that really grinds my goddamn gears. Yeah, I like that, Ronnie. Um, I had a coach in high school that said, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, don't even show up. Um, it's it's one of those things you, you read that the stupid things on the Internet about, like, be good at the things that don't take any skill, like showing up on time. It doesn't take any skill to show up on time. That's just effort. So it really does piss me off when you're there waiting for people because they're they're late. Because what like what were they doing? Why were they late? It's just because they didn't try to be on time. So I like it, Ronnie. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, agree as well. It's one of those things that you <clears throat> can control. I mean, people around here, they always show up late to work and they're like, oh, traffic. It's like, oh, really? You didn't know there was going to be traffic in Washington, D.C.? You didn't think at all there'd be any traffic? <clears throat> like, I, you know, put a half-hour buffer in there because I know there's something's going to happen. Know the Metro's going to fuck up. Know there's going to be traffic every day. And, you know, like, especially on that Zoom meeting, we had fucking Thor on there who's 86 years old. Yeah. I mean, how many good years does he have left? <laughs> and, you know, we're just sitting there wasting it away. He aged four years during that 30-minute break that we took. He had three more kids. That's right. What do you think, Danny? Yeah. Um, so my number three, um, <laughs> uh, you know, you might ask yourself, hold on a second, which of the things that this man does is what you're going to put on the list? But yes, uh, being late. Um, is my number three, and this is the picture that I was going to put up, because he's laughing at your fa in your face, because uh, basically what he's telling you is that his time is worth more than your time, um, and that he's more important than you are. When somebody's late, um, it really fucking grinds my gears, uh, especially at work. Uh, like yo, you bet. Like DJ said, you best have a good excuse. Cause I'm not waiting more than like five minutes. I'll just like make myself unavailable immediately 
uh, if you're not going to let me know what's going on, especially if you're like, I mean, like there'd be like people that are like trying to get our business and they're late. I'm like, no dog. Like that's not going to happen. Like, you know what I mean? Like I hate people that miss meetings or late for meetings. You know, like your time is not worth more than mine. In fact, to be quite frank with you, my time is way more important than your time. You know what I mean? People are people that are late to meetings because their dog has to drop a deuce that don't even have kids or anything. You know what I'm saying? Like my man DJ's got like seven kids now and he's got dog and he mm -hmm. seems to be on time for everything, if not early. So being late is the fucking worst. Um definitely I might his his face might appear in my two and one, but that's that was my number three. So great number four. Yeah, whoever that guy was, he's a piece of shit. Clearly, he's not me. He has a lot less hair than I do, so. Uh, what an asshole. I can't believe he did that. All right, mm. moving on to number three already. DJ, what do you got? I guess we're not going to talk about Danny's number three, but it was excellent. Uh, so number three for me, this, this is one where I kind of had to combine two into a category, but number three for me is people that won't get out of the damn way. And and there's two major examples of this. Danny talked about driving and how, like, there's so many things you could choose for driving. But for me, and I get fired up driving, the, the people that are in the left lane going slow, like, if you want to drive slow, I'm cool with that. Just get over to the right lane and do it. Why are you in my way? The, I, I've heard that the speed limit of the left lane is as fast as the person behind you wants to go. And I think that's what it should be. If somebody's... I. I mean, I drive fast, but I don't drive crazy. But if somebody's coming up behind me driving crazy, I get the hell out of the way. Just get out of the way. That's bad. And a second example that makes me even worse is at Costco. People at Costco, for whatever reason, are just wandering around in the crowded-ass store with their carts on their cell phones, staring at the wall. I have shit to do. I'm trying to get into Costco, get out of Costco, and they're in my way. So number three is people that won't get out of the damn way. Yeah, uh, this is a great one. Uh, Costco, for sure. I, I went to Costco for the first time in fucking years the other day, and it, it was a shit show. Like, people just leaving their carts everywhere. There's no fucking order to that. But <clears throat> I I walk really fast, and I get made fun of at work because I walk really fast outside of work. They're like, oh, man, you're just, you're just jetting. You're just jetting to the metro. I'm like, no, I'm walking with intent because I have somewhere to go. I'm not just going for a leisurely stroll. Like, once fucking 5.30 hits, you're on my time. I'm not getting paid anymore. I get to do whatever I want. I want to get the fuck out of D.C. And I'm walking through all these stupid tourists everywhere, so... And they better get the fuck out of my way, so... I agree. Yeah, so this is a, this is a kind of a good one, because you said it can fit multiple things. Driving, obviously, you know, if you drive in D.C., you know that, like, the left lane is not the fastest lane. You use the two middle lanes, and you just ride back and forth, and you, you'll get going where faster to where you're going, because people are launching in the left lane. Um, and, yeah, like, I feel like in, in grocery stores, though, like, you kind of got to do a better job of reading, like, who's in front. Like, it's like, if you see something, you, I mean, like, you kind of know, right? It's like, oh, look, that's like, you know, like a mom on her phone or whatever. You got to pop around them real quick and kind of maneuver. You can't do that necessarily on the road. And then, but a, a good, another good example of this happening are fucking kids, yo. They'll like walk in front of you and then like stop all of a sudden, turn around like you're not like fucking right behind. I'm like, you got 280 pounds of dormant muscle coming your way, baby. You better, you can't just t stop. I mean, I'm going to run your ass over. Like, and people in general will do that too. I feel like, like kind of bad if they feel like someone's like, if they're with somebody else. But kids and I feel like, dude, it's like, what are you doing? Don't just stop. Keep on walking. You know what I mean? Like, we're going somewhere. Don't just stop and turn around. So this is a good one. I like it, DJ. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone's going to agree with this, DJ. Uh, people are in the way of the worst. Uh, it's it's general, but another one that, um, that I thought of that I didn't put on my list, but I was going to, uh, I needed the backup, was actually... Um, bicyclists on uh you know two-way roads especially in rural areas you know on georgia avenue right off of georgia avenue there's very scenic especially now during the fall oh my god they're gonna be everywhere saturdays and sundays man i'm trying to get my fucking psychotic dog to training uh 
I'm running late, as we previously talked about, because I'm always late, because I think my tie is more important than everyone. And I need to go five miles faster than the speed limit, and you're going three or five miles an hour in a 40. Get your bike to the side of the road. You don't even got to be off the road. Just get to the side. I'm right behind you. You should have mirrors on your bike to see people that are behind you. And listen, I'm all about sharing the road, but just get the hell out of the way, all right? Come on, get the hell out of the way. Clearly, I don't want to be going the same speed as you. I'm in a car. If I want to go the same speed as you, I'd be in the fucking bike, too. So, great pick, DJ. Bikers is an excellent one. I forgot about that, Ronnie, because we yeah. live in roughly the same area. There's a lot of bikers out here. It's awful. It's awful. All right, Ryan, what's your uh, number of trace? You might see some bikers at my next location, and I'm talking about... Anybody at the gym without gym etiquette. I mean, every gym ever is just full of some of the worst people of all time. I mean, so many inconsiderate assholes who aren't worried about people around them. We've got scrawny scrubs doing supersets, <laughs> taking up like three separate pieces of equipment, then gets pissed when you take one of them because he hasn't been there for 10 minutes. I mean, you got gross-ass people not wiping down their equipment. You got idiots using chalk to deadlift 135 pounds. I mean, you got that asshole taking up a bench to just sit there and talk on his phone the entire time. I mean, the main thing in life that really grinds on my gears are people not being considerate of other people around them. And gyms in general are probably the biggest offenders of this. So gym etiquette is my number three. Yeah, in my opinion, uh, the only exercise you should be doing with other people is if it's a team sport. Um, otherwise, you know, like, do that shit on your own time. You know what I mean? Like, you sh- there shouldn't even be gyms. That shit's it's dirty as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, to be uh, quite honest, I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like, people in general are the worst. You know what I mean? And, and including, I mean, like, I sweat like a motherfucker. So I, I get, like, self-conscious. You know what I mean? Like, I got, like... I'm DJ, I'm, I'm big sweaty up in the gym, you know what I'm saying? I got multiple towels and shit wrapping myself up just so I don't get a little bit of sweat dripping on, on anything. You know, it makes me self-conscious, so I don't even fuck with that shit. I, like, I really feel like, you know, do that shit on your own time. The only time I really want to hang out with you or talk to you, like, is, like, when you're, you know, after you showered and shit. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need to be, you don't need to be conversating at the gym. Like, fuck that. You know what I mean? Like, get a life. Ronnie? Yeah, no, um, I completely agree with you, Ryan. Um, this is something that I had when I was going to the gym experience uh, quite often. But it did actually, at the end of the day, help me out. Because, you know, if I needed something, like a piece of equipment that someone else was, like, jobbing or, like, texting on and shit like that, I would just figure out other ways to do the exercise in different areas, which really helped me out, varying my, my workouts and my machines. That's why I became so buff why everyone called me uh, non-scrawny scrubs. Um, so th- those were the days, like five years ago. But uh, you're right in general. Like People are gross at the gym. Uh, they use it like it's their bathroom, kind of. Um, they do really weird shit in there. Uh, and they're really inconsiderate of other people. And at the end of the day, you're around other people. You're in public, so you should be considerate. So I completely agree with you. Yeah, I mean, any, anything where there's bodily fluid involved, like, you really got to consider other people. Um, that shit's nasty. And I I don't know, maybe it's because I'm not in great shape, but the people that just sit there and do curls all day and stare at themselves in the mirror, that's a, that's another thing that bothers me about the gym. I guess, maybe that's not gym etiquette, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's just, like you said, being inconsiderate. People Inconsiderate people suck, and this is a great example of inconsiderate people. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think that was a good one. Danny, uh, number three? Or... I already had my number three. So you, uh, people being late is my number three. All right. And that grinds everyone's gears here, especially me. I'm always on time. Um, all right. I guess it's my number three then. And my number three is uh, public transportation and the seats aren't big enough for someone like me. I'm a fucking tiny ass motherfucker. I get onto a plane and I'm struggling with this this chick who's smaller than me for her armrest. Uh, you know, she's like we're like sort of in each other's seats already. Like, what's going on, man? Like, 
Air, airlines aren't that pressed for cash. I know they make billions a year. They're asking for government bailouts already again because of Rona. But maybe you made some bigger seats and you made a more comfortable ride for everyone like it used to be. Like what kind of industry goes backwards in terms of service and comfort? Oh, the airline industry. It's bullshit. And the biggest bullshit about it is the tiny seats. It's so stupid. Like what if you're in the middle? What if it's the only seat and you have to travel somewhere? You get you get to buy a late ticket and it's the only seat left and you got to sit in between two assholes, you know, and they're like rubbing up against you and stuff like that. Make, make some comfortable seats so people can enjoy their ride. It grinds my gears. What do you think, DJ? Yeah, I mean, small seats suck. I'm not a small guy. I'm a big guy. I don't mind <clears throat> flying at all. I kind of enjoy it. You're going on vacation. But the one thing I do hate about flying is sitting in those tiny ass seats. That's why I like Southwest. I've I got it down to a science now. I know how to like get on there, give give like like mean mug big dudes when they walk down the aisle so they won't sit by me and like grab little kids that look like they're lost and pull them in the middle seat next to me. It's kind of weird, but I do it. <laughs> uh I flew back from San Francisco after a conference on like a, a red eye when the plane was packed because it was all and it was on like United where you can't pick your or you pick your seat ahead of time. And it was a full flight. Their seats are small as shit. And the dude next to me was gigantic. It was it was miserable. Like I would gladly pay extra if you make your seats a little bit bigger. But but they just pack everybody in there, I guess, to make a little bit extra money. But Maybe, maybe they need, like Danny would say, a big man approved airline with the bigger seats and charge a little bit extra. But yeah, another another good choice. Yeah, I, I was always wondering how DJ got on that new fly list. Now I guess uh, <laughs> makes a little more sense. But I, I, I mean, I agree with you. And the, the worst thing that airlines do is let you recline your seat. Like, yeah, what? The, why is that even an option to completely? fuck the person that's behind you yeah i mean like we had that going to greece and this lady just leaned back all the way and was you know destroying anessa's knees for 12 hours we got to be on this flight and you have to lean back and be a dick and ruin it for the person behind you so i don't even they gotta remove that reclining option so yeah that's a good pick yeah, I mean, this. I think the other industry that does this, which is crazy, is like the sporting industry. Like they'll like try to like cramp small. It's like you know, it's not a fun experience, dude. Like what the yeah. fuck? Like, and honestly, like with the it's like with airlines. I think the worst part, and I'm a big guy, so I'll tell you what the worst part about it. It's if you have wide shoulders. Now you know DJ's. He's got you know dancer shoulders, but you know Ryan and I. You know what I'm saying? We're you know what I mean? It's like you don't have to be like a huge person to have like wide shoulders. It's like I'm sitting on the end, like, of the aisles in the aisle, and every time the drink cart comes by, they're just like, bam! Like, that's just, like, mad impact on my whole elbow and shit. Like, I lose feeling half the time it, it comes by, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, it's about the shoulder width, you know what I'm saying? Like, give a man, I mean, and then, you know, and, I, and you know, I am, like, super conscious about, like, my, like, leg placement, you know what I mean? Like, so that, like, I'm not mansplaining. Yo, like, if, I, if dudes, like open their like i straight up open my legs wide as shit in that situation on purpose where it's like fuck off bro you know what i'm saying i'm a big guy i can definitely out big man you in this situation <laughs> but it's yeah it is it's, it's ridiculous it makes experience terrible it makes everybody super anxious and paranoid all the time look everybody when i'm entering the plane i'm not i'm not excited about sitting next to you either homeboy you know what i'm saying i know you don't want me sitting next to you and i don't want to sit next to you i would rather be sitting in a seat that's better by myself you know what i mean it's it's not just a you thing baby you know what i'm saying uh so yeah this is a good one i'll, I'll give you credit for this one at the number three thanks danny i, I put that in there as a layup to you because i knew you're gonna be hating on me with the late stuff uh, all right, I guess it's, uh, it's back to you, uh, DJ, for your number two. <clears throat> so number one and number two were hard for me to choose, but uh, the order. But number two, I'm going with social media. Uh, like Ryan mentioned earlier, how it's all about the validation. Like that shit is ruining everything. Uh, I mean, it, it's just falling apart. Like the the inspirational quotes, the vague status updates, like. I'm hesitant to say this because I might uh, upset people, but like the posts to people, like when people make posts to like people that can't read it, like 
to their like two year old, like we love you so much. We've been thinking about you. Like just get out of here with that. They can't fucking read it. Like who are you talking to right now? You're trying to get a like. That shit is ridiculous. Like influencers, I don't even know what that is. People, politics, like get the fuck out of here. That's terrible. I like Twitter used to be the shit, man. I used to love Twitter. Like Facebook's been done for me for years, but Twitter, I like followed infosec people for work sports other shit i'm interested like twitter was where i would go for information i wouldn't google shit i would go to twitter now like twitter is a fucking cesspool of just bullshit people arguing about politics nonsense social media is fucking terrible it's ruining everybody because all they want are those likes like ryan said so i fucking hate social media it grinds my gears yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and agree with you, DJ. Uh, social media is ruining fucking everything. I mean, how many times have you guys been like at a wedding and you look around and there's 12 people that you're at the table with and everybody's on their phone? I mean, like, what the fuck? You're all looking at the same stupid picture. Like, who the fuck cares? I mean, I liked it back in the day when Facebook was only for certain colleges that you could actually be a member. Now, like... I'm a creepy old asshole and I have access to be on Facebook. Like I aged out of it. Kick me off Facebook. You don't want fucking creeps like me on there. So I'll go ahead and agree with you, DJ. Yeah. I mean, this is one of those things that's uh, like a necessary evil. I feel like kind of like Amazon or internet security. Uh, You know what I mean? Like, yo, like everyone needs internet security and there's tons of firms in Columbia that do that kind of stuff. Now to take your money. You know what I'm saying? There's Amazon. Dude, those guys, you mean like people hate Amazon until you need something the next day and everything else takes two or three days or you can't go into a fucking store because of COVID and it's like, well, you got to use it. So I feel like social media is one of those things where like, yes, I I agree to a certain extent, like it's a a lot of bullshit, uh, but it's almost like you have to still be a part of it uh, because like it's just like almost like if you're not, you're weird. That's the worst part. I know, so... I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree to a certain extent, but I feel like it is a necessary evil, though. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with you, not because of what you said. I mean, they're all valid. Like, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of trash on social media. Twitter, in particular, is is a very sad place, a very argumentative and angry place. But on the flip side, you did also mention that that's where news is. I mean. You know, if it wasn't for social media, you wouldn't know a lot about a lot of things that are going on in the world that were outside your immediate scope. You know, you wouldn't hear more about, um, you know, what's going on with like internment camps uh, of certain ethnicities in in China. You wouldn't know about um, things like, you know, whatever ICE is doing at the border, uh, which sounds pretty heinous. And I'm not entirely sure. I haven't read the the whole thing, but uh, it sounds pretty bad. And, um, you know, Social media allows people that don't necessarily have, um, you know, clout within traditional media outlets to have their story be told and circulate through uh, a lot of people. So um, although there is a lot of bad, like, um, you know, the furries that are on Twitter that all follow me, I don't know why they love me, probably because I haven't shaved or had a haircut in a very long time. Um, There are the good things like people being able to communicate from across the world and circulate their stories and stuff like that. So I'm going to disagree with you to a certain extent. Uh, but other than that, um, Ryan, oh, wait, who's next? Oh, yeah, Ryan, you're next. You're, uh, you're number two. All right, so my number two is uh, people who don't walk when they're on the left side of an escalator. <laughs> I mean, I've got to take two metro trains to get to and from work every day. I mean, that's four trains I'm I'm rushing to catch every day. And about 50% of the time, I miss my train because someone is on the left side of the escalator just chilling. I mean, look at this fucking bitch right here just laying down on an escalator (laughs) while this guy is trying to move to get her moving. I mean, and I'm not talking about old people or disabled people or young people. I mean, I understand they can't walk. That's why there's the walk left stand right rule i mean but it's not even them who are holding people up it's always some fucking stupid tourist or some high school douche from gonzaga who's just sitting on the escalator (laughs) i mean i'll tell you this gonzaga punk you're just lucky my friend eric wallaconis isn't with me 
but he tell you that Gonzaga sucks, buddy, as long as he's a safe distance away. So <laughs> that's why people who, you know, do not walk on the left-hand side of the escalator, it's my number two. I mean, Gonzaga people could be a, a grind your gears thing altogether. I only know like two of them that are like, I, I can even stand, they're the worst. But yeah, this is like a, a, a very DC and like, I think public transportation kind of thing. Um, you know, like growing up near and around the city and using the Metro and then working downtown, I gained a lot of respect uh, for like the uh, unspoken rules of public transportation, including moving to the right uh, because it can, you know, those 15 seconds can make a big difference. Uh, can make, especially when you're trying to catch a train, Greenbelt and those motherfuckers only come like every 10 minutes as a pain in the ass. Um, so yeah, like if you're out there, you know, teach your children some etiquette, uh, especially when they're riding that uh, escalator, you know what I mean? Move to the right. If there's enough room, some escalators are too small though, like where you can't even do it anymore, but if you got enough room, you move right, you stay, or you move to the left and you pop up, you you walk up. Yeah, uh, I'm going to have to agree with you, uh, Ryan. I lived in D.C. for five years, and as you know, I'm always on time to everything, but sometimes I you know, was, was pinching the time a little fast, and I needed to get down to that train before it left and have to wait you know, another seven minutes for the next one to come, and there's you know, some asshole on the left side that, as a tourist, and he's, he's in there, and he's visiting his his daughter that lives in the same apartment complex, and uh, decides to stand on the left next to his his kid, and they're just clogging up the the escalator. And I guess this this could go along with the the previous uh, grinding our gears uh, topic of people who don't get out of the way, like DJ brought up, and this is a great example. And uh, I completely agree with you. <clears throat> yeah, it's probably even a better example of of that because. When I'm talking about people not getting out of the way in the left lane, like they're probably making me arrive like a minute or two later. But like Danny said, 15 seconds when you're trying to get to that train could be a 15 minute difference on your arrival. So that I mean, this shit's ridiculous. And it's it's not like going faster or slower. It's not moving or moving like this shit's cut and dry, black and white. If you're not moving, get the fuck out of the way. So if if I rode the Metro more, I probably would have would have uh, thrown this in with. But but I think you took what I had and, and escalated it to another level there, Ryan. No pun. <laughs> um, all right. Good one. That was a good one, Ryan. So I'm going to get into my uh, number two. Uh, and this just seems to be like something that like people are like, okay with doing so much more recently and in public, but like, yo, why is everyone so judgmental? Yo, like all the fucking time. Like about everything. Talk about social media. Kind of like it's good that I bring it up. Like with social media, it's like, you know, people are like having so super bad mental and you know in, involvement uh, or sorry, like problems with like social media. Kids are killing themselves because of like what people are saying to them on social media. Like, why is everyone worried about everybody else? Yo, like you know what I'm saying. Like life is stressful and fucking like, a, and there's a lot of anxiety as it is in life. So, like, why has everyone got to go around judging everybody, you know? Like, sizeism, that's a real thing, and that shit ain't right. Sexism ain't right. Racism ain't right. Yo, fucking mind your business. Go about your life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm almost... That's why it's like some people think I'm crazy, but, like, if, yo, if, you, if you're, like, a drug addict, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got one life. I'm not going to, like, do your thing, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Like, stop being so judgmental about everybody. You know, everyone's got their own issues. You're out there, people out there judging people, and, like, you have no idea what the fuck I'm going... What, what's going on with me. Uh, in my day, you know what I'm saying? So, like, stop judging everybody, you know what I mean? Like, fuck, yo. Every, everybody in society, especially, like, does this shit, like, and, like, it's, like, now people are, like, they think they can do it in public and, like, call you out. It's like, fuck no, man, catch me on the wrong day, son. You know what I mean? Like, stop judging everybody, everybody, you know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, you know what I mean? Like, who cares? It like, fucking grinds the shit out of my gears, man. Like, judgmental people in general, and it getting more, it's getting worse and worse. So, Ronnie? Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, you know, judgmental people tend to already be uh, upset with themselves and their own lives, and so they got to take it out on someone else to try to make themselves feel better, uh, which just puts that person in the same position, and that person falls into to judging other people. And and you're right, like uh, you know, people should mind their own business. People don't do it enough. Um, you know, sometimes you'll see 
parents with a crying kid in a store and people are like, oh, well, why don't you shut your kid up? And it's just like, bro, you don't know what's going on. Like, you don't know, you know, if the kid got like is sick or something like that or, you know, has a condition. And, you know, obviously it's a parent. They're trying. They don't want their kid screaming and yelling. You don't got to judge them. And um, you see like a homeless man. People judge homeless people all the time. And they treat them like they're nothing. And it's wrong. And, and you're right. And uh, you just sort of marginalize people. And it just makes everyone more miserable. And it makes them make top five grind your gear podcasts. Right. So I agree with you, Danny. Yeah, I'm going to disagree with this one. Uh, too much agreement going on on this fucking podcast. We need some dissent, RBG style. Fucking, I judge people all day long. You guys made a goddamn podcast where you judge everybody's opinions every fucking week. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go against this one. Disagree. Judge away, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and agree. But, yeah, just like DJ said, all we've been doing for the last hour is talking, is judging people for certain things that they do. <laughs> But uh, I'll go ahead and agree. Uh, Like, I don't know why people are so invested in other people. Uh, My the group of people I actually care about is just getting smaller and smaller over the years. I mean, I only have so much time and energy and there's really only, you know, my, you know, family and my friends. That's all I care about. Like, I don't really give a shit about anybody else. You know, if you're not hurting anybody else, do your thing. I don't give a fuck. That's that's my rule that if you don't hurt anybody, you're cool with me. Do your thing. So and I think this is going into my number. It's going to jump onto my number one, which I can't wait to get to because a lot of people judge on that and I'm going to get hated on for it. So I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. All right. Yes, uh, that means it's my number two time. And my number two time is the NCAA really grinds my gears. What a fucking piece of shit the NCAA is. First off, it's not even a real thing. It's, it's just this loosely made committee solely created to keep their labor free. I mean, these are 18, 19, 20-year-old kids They were doing any other job other than playing a sport for uh, a college, which they're raking money in for. uh, They'd be making money. But because they're in, you know, in a college that's a part of the NCAA, the NCAA poses, you know, suspensions on these kids or or won't let them play or uh, makes them ineligible because they took a money because they signed a football I mean, that football is worth a shit ton of money, man, because they're bringing in a lot of money for their schools. The schools get the profit off these kids, but those kids don't get the profit off the, uh, their own likeness themselves. Jay Billis went on, um, you know, Google once, and he just typed in, uh, or the NCAA store, and he typed in Jadavian Clowney once, and all of number three from South Carolina jerseys and hats and shirts was popping up. So don't sit there and tell me you don't make money off these kids. You make billions of dollars off these kids Uh, they get hurt Uh, some of them don't even go to the pros and they're they're stars in college and they're they should be making money off their labor Um, it's it's wrong it's it's bullshit and so the NCAA really grinds my gears yeah it's another good one Um, I guess for like a while with the whole like should we pay kids thing like I didn't really get it and I was like well no they're getting a college education and blah 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 but now it's clear that like <clears throat> they're making stupid money off these kids and it's a joke. Um, the other thing is like when with the whole COVID thing with like football and making decisions, like when they had a chance to actually lead and like be a governing body, they were nowhere to be fucking seen. They left all that shit to the conferences to figure out on their own. So like what the fuck is the NCA even there for? So yeah, I like it. Yeah, I'll go ahead and agree as well. I mean, how fucking short is the average, you know, NFL career? I mean, it's insanely, insanely short. If you, like, took everybody and average it, it's, like, fucking probably a couple months. Like, honestly, it's not long at all. I mean, let these people make money while they can before they get 50 concussions or, you know, tear, you know, the hamstring or something like that or get hurt and can't do it. And yeah, it's it's someone just profiting off them. I mean, you remember like when LeBron James was in high school and they were trying to put his games on pay-per-view and shit? 
like that. Bullshit. And like, yeah, that is bullshit. I mean, like, give LeBron James some money. This guy needs some money. So go back and give him money for that. So I'll DJ's agree. Right. DJ is right. Y'all agree, agreeing too much. Uh, the NCAA is capitalism at its finest. What is America if it's not out there to try to take other people's money for shit you don't do, baby? You know what I mean? That's exactly what all, that's what everybody, that's everything in life. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You just get out there. I love the NCAA for the spirit. And it might be coming to an end because you're right. It doesn't, I mean, in reality, they've been sitting there laughing, taking checks to the bank for years. They're like, how has nobody noticed that we're not even a real thing? Like, you know what I mean? How's people like actually think that we do anything we don't have any control or say or power at whatsoever but people seem to continue to listen to what i say it's like um for them it's great you know and i think it's just capitalism at its finest baby capitalizing on other people's uh on other people's talents go for it who runs the ncaa too is that nobody no one Trump knows that. Trump. Trump. That. It's, it's like, like <laughs> the fucking wizard of oz or something it's <laughs> just right. kind of like yeah. pulling <laughs> The colleges make like an umbrella, like a fake umbrella company <laughs> that runs them, but they run that. That makes right. any sense. It's bullshit. Uh, all right. That, that was my number two. Uh, everyone commented. So I guess we're on to DJ, your number one. So number one. So this one like might be one that, I don't know, maybe it's a quirk in my personality. and But I had to put this one number one because it's the one that brings me closest to like violence. It's noise, man. I can't fuck with noise. Like when I'm trying to do something and the kids are making noise, like I, I want to kill them. I want to like rip their heads off. It drives me crazy. I, I remember when we were in the Outer Banks a while back. Danny, remember this trip when we went to the Outer Banks when we were like young as shit when Ella was just born. Like people, we were just sitting there hanging out during the day and like the TV was on and somebody was playing music. And everyone else is having a good time, and I'm just sitting there going insane in my because two different noise sources were going at once. I can't handle it. At work now with like these Zoom meetings, we have some where there's like larger meetings with like 60, 70 people on them. Somebody's talking, everybody should be muted. There's one fucking person always unmuted that's pots and pans banging in the background noises. I go through the Zoom list, I see which person's microphone is lighting up, I look them up, I find out who they are, and I start trying to find where they live because I want to fucking kill them. I can't stand that shit. <laughs> Noise is number one on my grind my gears list. Wow. That that gear was thoroughly ground. Uh number Ryan, one. what are your thoughts? Are you done, DJ? I don't know. I'll probably have more to say later, but you guys go. <laughs> All right. I love noise, man. Like I <laughs> I can't sleep without noise. Like, I need something constantly in my ear or I can't fall asleep. Like, I need to listen to some fucking documentary about Bigfoot or I'm not going to be able to fall asleep. If I'm not listening to some cryptic, you know, documentary, I'm not going to be able to fall asleep. So that's noise is the only thing that gets me to sleep. So I'm going to go ahead and disagree and love noise. Yeah, I can't disagree more. Love noise as well. My brain won't shut off unless there's like it, I have to work with like music or something else in the background. Like I get my most of my I have to do it or else I don't get if I don't have that, I'm like, oh my god, I have 15 different things I have to do and I can't focus on which one I want to be done. But if I have like head if I have noise going on in the background, it, let, it lets me focus. Maybe it's attention deficit disorder. I don't know. But I love noise. Um, you know, I do. I, I mean, like, I think DJ to a certain extent, I hate. I, I like there's certain noise I hate. Like, stop asking me so many goddamn questions all the time. You know what I mean? But I'm all right with noise. Um, you know what I mean? And I'm with Ryan. Like, I can't go to bed without noise. Like, I gotta have the TV on, uh, or something else on. You know, uh, to go to bed. So noise is is my friend. It, it quiets my brain. Yeah, hey, um, DJ, I'll, I'll go ahead and agree with you. Uh, I don't like it when there's two things, you know, playing like at the same time. Uh, I'm able to sort of filter it out. I think I've gotten pretty good at it after a while. But the one thing I hate is like I'm watching like fucking TV shows like Game of Thrones or whatever, and the music's loud as shit, and all of a sudden they're talking and it's like very quiet and they're talking, and then someone's like, "Oh, what do they say? 
What is that? What are they saying? You missed like half the fucking the half the fucking speech, the dialogue. And she's like, shut the fuck up. I'll tell you what they said after the goddamn episode. How about that, right? Like, it's fucking bullshit. If something's going on, someone's trying to pay attention, someone's trying to concentrate, just shut the fuck up, all right? Just let them go, do their thing, or just go into another room. Or go somewhere else and make a goddamn why, noise. Why does the music always got to be louder than the dialogue? Can't they fix that shit by now? Like, what the fuck, yo? Like, they got smart TVs and shit. It's fucking bullshit. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. All right, Ryan, you're number one. All right, so I'm, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for my number one, but you know what I'm fucking sick of? People telling me I got to vote. No, I fucking don't. <laughs> I have the same right as you to take my vote and throw it away. You know, I think voting is fucking stupid. And maybe you think not voting is stupid. But the difference is I'm not pressing my ideals on you like you are to me. You know, I don't follow politics. I don't care who wins. I really don't think it makes a difference. This whole democracy thing is just giving people the illusion that they have the power. You know, so when something bad happens, they can just say, well, this is who you voted for, or this is who your neighbor voted for, so be mad at them. I mean, it's just an ingenious way to turn our nation against each other and we're too busy fighting with one each other, you know, to realize that, you know, to realize or at least address the problem that it's coming from the top. So, you know, some so come election time, you know, when all these uninformed people who have no idea of any of the issues are telling me I've got to get out and vote. No. Yeah, I mean, um, so voting is a funny thing to me for me, like. For a long time, I didn't vote. I voted like when I was like at 18 in college, and that was I think I voted for Gore or something. And he didn't win. He won the like popular vote, but not the electoral college. And that's when I realized that the system was flawed uh, in general, anyway. Um, but you know, people that like are really into that, and then like so like, then I got back into voting because I did I did want to start to like you know I wanted to feel like more involved in like that I was making or like. You know, acting and getting some decision in what is happening uh, as we live in a free country and it is a right to vote. Um, but then, like, you know, you start talking about like telling people, like, you know, like I had, like, I voted for Hogan last presidency. I had like multiple people, like, I, I'll tell them that and be like, well, you wasted your vote. It's like, nah, motherfucker. Like, I didn't waste my vote. I vote for who I want to in my conscience. And you're also the reason why people hate to vote because, like, if you don't vote for how they want to vote, then it's a wasted vote. But in reality, if especially if you're in Maryland, you know what I mean. Like we're we're always Democratic, especially for presidents. If you vote for anybody but the Democrat, then you're wasting your vote, basically, because they're not. You know what I mean? It's always going to go to the Democrat anyway. So telling me that I waste my vote is also part of it. I uh, I agree to a certain extent with the voting things. You know what I mean? I I do vote though, so I it's like for me it's kind of like half and half. So, Ronnie, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, uh, I completely agree with you, Ryan. Uh, although I would say you are in a battleground state technically in, in Virginia now, so your vote probably has more weight than than mine or Danny's or DJ's would, uh, for what Danny just said. Um, but you're right. I mean, you have the right to vote. You also have the right to not vote. And people that shame you are being judgmental, which we discussed earlier, and they need to get the fuck out of the way, like we discussed earlier trying to act all smart and smarter than you, like we discussed earlier. Uh, it's bullshit. Uh, you know, I, I tell people this all the time. Like, everyone's like, oh, are you voting for Biden? And I'm like, I fucking hate Joe Biden. Listen, I fucking hate him, right? Sleepy Joe, that's hilarious, by the way. Sleepy Joe, I, hate, I fucking hate Trump, too. Obviously, I hate Trump. Doesn't mean I'm automatically voting for, you know, a, a dead guy uh, that literally has... No policy whatsoever. I would go up to a person that's voting for Biden and ask him what one of his policy is. You are crickets. Well, you're not Trump. Like, what the fuck is that? Earn my vote. You want me to vote for you? Earn my fucking vote. Give me something. You tell me what you want me to, you're going to do, it's going to help me. You can't do that. Fuck you. I'm not going to vote for either of you. Completely agree. Yeah, I agree too, Ryan. Um, <clears throat> I think less people should vote. I think people have no idea what they're actually voting for when they vote. I wish there was some kind of, like, 
I think I voted in the last two elections, but before that didn't vote because like I didn't follow shit. So like I didn't feel like I had a right to vote because I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I wish there was some kind of test you had to take to vote, like not to prove like your intelligence or like anything like that, but just to prove that you know what either candidate is even like saying. I don't think most people have any fucking idea. They just vote on like party lines or like because their parents voted that way or their wife voted that way or whatever. Like no one. So, yeah, I'm I'm all about not voting, um, especially in Maryland. I mean, our vote doesn't really matter. Nobody's vote really matters if we're being honest. Like a single person's vote doesn't matter at all. I still think you should vote if you know what's going on, if you follow it. But more people should not vote. And people that talk shit to you if you don't vote, that also grinds my gears. So I like it. Yeah, DJ, that's a great idea. They should have a test that determines how much your vote's worth. You know, so you can earn a full vote, but if you're not in, if you don't know enough, it's like you get like a half, your vote's worth like half as much as somebody that's fully informed. I don't think that's I'll do that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I like, I like, like, think about it. Everybody would study up, learn everything about the politics and like the, the different politicians so their vote would count for more. Yeah, we can I call like them three fifths compromise. <laughs> great. I was waiting for that. All right, if you can't read, you can't vote or own land. I agree with you guys. Now we're getting. All right, uh, so um, we'll get into my number one quickly um, because Ronnie's getting into his racist mode. Obviously, let's. Um, <laughs> so my number one, okay, uh, is <laughs> what is this? Is not saying thank you for me holding the door for you. All right. <laughs> you might not have asked me to hold the door for you, but if I fucking went out of my way to fucking hold the damn door for you, you better, better say thank you. And if you don't, you better expect that I'm going to say you're welcome to you, even if you don't say thank you to me, because that's what I do. My number one thing that grinds my gears are people that don't thank me for holding the door for them. And I don't even care if you didn't want me to hold the door for you or not. It's just fucking common etiquette. Thank me. Because no matter what, you're getting a you're welcome. And it's going to be a louder what you're welcome if you didn't thank me. That's my number one. That shit grinds my gears. Fucking thank me for holding the door. Uh, yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, to a certain extent. Uh, me, when I hold the door open for someone... If they don't say thank you, I don't really care. I just do it because it's the polite thing to do, um, you know, and, and vice versa. The polite thing to do for on their end would be to say thank you, right? But at the end of the day, I can't control their manners, and uh, that just makes me feel better than them, and I get to judge them, uh, which we already discussed. So, um, you know, manners in general, uh, there is a severe lack of manners, like, you know, not only the door opening stuff, but for me, like, the thing that really grinds my gears about manners is people that treat wait staff at restaurants poorly. Like my man, he doesn't want to be here serving you food. No one wants to do that. You know, it's not his fault. The food's fucking cold. Someone may have made a mistake or something like that. Be easy on him. He's got 10 tables. He got to go to you try doing that shit. You can't do that. Um, so he's I, also not cooking the food either. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. And, and you ask for something crazy, like cheeseburger or that cheese, like, so you want a burger? No, I want a cheeseburger. Like, what the fuck does that even mean? So, completely agree with you, Danny. Uh, manners, saying thank you for when the door opens. You know, you should do it. It's, it's, the, it's the polite thing to do. So Ronnie's trying to slip a sixth one in, talking about cheeseburgers and, and food service. But I, uh, I feel like when you hold the door for somebody and they say thank you, that's like this... The, like one time with this like random person you don't know like you have this like connection with them of like like hey, we're all in this together it's like this humanity thing it's, it's the only time you really get that thing like it happens so often but i will say i like i like the pick here but i actually think the flip side of the person that doesn't hold the door for you when you're walking up that actually grinds my gears more than the person who doesn't say thank you when i when i hold the doors that shit like when you walk up and the doors just swinging closed right in front of you, that shit drives me crazy. So, but I, I like it. But that's I actually would have went with the other side of it, person that doesn't hold the door. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and disagree. I mean, the you know the older I get, the more that I learn that you 
can't control other people's actions, but that shouldn't stop you from doing the correct thing. So I think you should do the correct thing all the time, no matter what the results. So if that person goes ahead and ignores you, you know, 10 times in a row, the 11th time, go ahead and open the door too. Um, so just because someone does something wrong, I don't think that should stop you from doing something right. So I'm going to go ahead and disagree. Grind your gears. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I try not to get too hung up on other people's actions these days. Oh, well, there it is. Uh, I thought it was a good one, but a little bit of disagreement there. So I guess I'll go on to my number one, uh, and it is adult birthdays. I uh, grind my gears to no end. Uh, I, I actually really don't like it when people wish me a happy birthday now because nothing is different. Nothing has changed from three days ago to now. Uh, you know, my birthday is inconsequential. I'm turning 37. Like, no one cares. I'm not a kid. I don't need to eat cake with candles on it. I don't need party hats. You know, I don't need presents. I like to hang out. If it's an excuse to hang out, that's fine. Like, I agree, I agree with that. That's cool. But all the hoopla around it, like, oh, my God, you're turning out. Blah, blah, and it's just like, who gives a shit? Like, who cares? That's for children. It's like Halloween. It's for children. Christmas is for children. It, it, there's nothing new. There's nothing different. Adult birthdays are the worst thing. They're super cringeworthy. Stop doing it. Is that Tommy Paul? <laughs> yeah. Totally. You're drinking an apple teeny. It's definitely Tommy Paul. Uh, DJ, what do you think? Can you take your picture down? Fine. Uh, so I'm going to disagree, Ronnie. Jeez. Um so like I don't have my my birthday on Facebook. So like when it's my birthday, nobody knows. I get like three people that tell me it's my birthday, and that that's awesome because it's like those three people remembered. But like as an adult man, like everybody's so fucking busy. We have so much like stuff going on. Like the one time a year where it's like people I might not only they might that might be the only time this year I talk to them. Like if we do something for my birthday, they're gonna show up. I feel like almost like the adult birthdays more important than the kid birthday man kids are like doing shit all the time always partying always having fun the adult life is just like a grind and it's like this is my one day a year where i want to celebrate and see all these people and do my thing like i i like the adult birthday so i disagree ronnie yeah, i'm gonna go ahead and disagree too all those things you named you know christmas halloween Birthdays, those are all awesome as an adult because you can do whatever the fuck you want. And you need those special occasions to break up the fucking monotony of your fucking life. I mean, DJ is right. Like, fucking that's... When else do we get together now? For somebody's wedding, everybody's already fucking married off. You know, we've got, like, a couple people left and that's it. So we're going to see each other three more times for the rest of our lives. The only thing left is we get, we have to get together is birthdays. I mean, I went out for Joe Hunter's birthday this weekend, and it was fun as shit. We got kicked out of Cornerstone again at 37 years old. I mean, fucking perfect. You know, so I'm going to go ahead and disagree with. Yeah, disagree big time with this one. I think DJ and Ryan brought some, up some very good points i feel that the adult birthday is actually more important than the kid birthday kid birthdays kid birthdays is like i want to invite my class over for my birthday it's like what like you see those motherfuckers five days a week you know what i'm saying like i don't get to see anybody that i want to see five days a week except for my family you know what i mean and i and it, it's like it break it like ryan said it breaks up the monotony of like having events breaks up the monotony of like life you know what i mean being able to like celebrate a little bit of your friend's life just for a day you know what i mean i like to do that you know what i mean like i'm a big birthday guy i love christmas you know what i mean i love the holidays in general um you know what i mean it gets me in the you know in a more festive spirit and i'm not as depressed like in the middle of winter when it's all dark and cold and shit all the time you get depressed and then the holidays kind of cheer me up it's something to look forward to uh, but birthday, yeah, adult birthdays are the tits. I like celebrating them. I wish we celebrated them more often. Uh, and I will continue to always try to have a joint birthday with Erica, always, just so that I can see you. Except now I'm not going to invite Ronnie because he's going to show up late anyway. So, 
That's it, Ronnie. You're done. That's it. All right, now nah, we are we are done. I guess uh, I'm kicked out of the group now for hating on birthdays. And uh, I mean, it really ground my gears. I wasn't invited to Joe Hunter's birthday, but I guess everyone, yeah, everyone, I wasn't everyone's, either. everyone's hanging out on Joe Hunter's birthday, and and it's cool to celebrate birthday. Not I wasn't either. We can. You were on the group text. Connor liked it fucking ten times. You got that <laughs> notification. It got lost in the sea of likes. <laughs> All right. We, uh, we end every week with an ethical question. Uh, and this week, uh, I get to pick that ethical question. And it is, or it was going to be, what Ryan's grind my gears was with the voting thing. Uh, you know, is it ethical to tell someone that it's okay or not to, to vote? So I pick something different. You know, is it okay, is it ethical to correct someone else's child when they're acting a fool around your child? Go ahead, DJ. Hell yes. It takes a village to raise a kid, man. Like, I mean, right now with this virtual learning shit, like <clears throat> my kids have a couple friends are doing it with where one day a week they come to our house. We had five kids here today doing virtual learning. Like another day they go to another kid's house. And I, like I had to help the one kid with their math homework. The one kid was acting crazy. I had to tell him to chill out. Like if I can't trust the other parents that I'm letting my kids around to put them in their place when they're doing dumb shit. Like, like I need that. So hell yes. It's, it's a hundred percent cool to correct another child when they're acting crazy. So there's, so I feel like it depends on the situation. Um, if there's not like another adult around, yeah, you're damn right. And if, if it's my, if it's my friend's kids, I would, I would also in any situation, if they're around and I would also like reprimand my friend's kids, just like they better reprimand my kid. Um, if she was doing anything crazy, even if I'm around, cause we just kind of don't, you know, we try to like watch each other when we're around each other. But like, if I'm in a new situation and the parent is also there, like, let's say I'm at like a playground and like their kids being a dick, I don't like to be a dick to the kid. I just speak really loudly about how bad the parenting is of the kid. So the parent hears me talking about them. Um, so I don't reprimand the kid in that situation. I reprimand the parent like through, through, uh, public humiliation. Uh, and usually people don't, you like say anything and they'll pull their kid away because they don't want to get in a confrontation with me um but that's how i deal with it if it's like that situation but i agree with dj like if you know the kid especially if like you're the, like the parent seeing what or the adult seeing what's going on um like and there's no other adults around yeah you reprimand kids that's well, kind of judgmental there danny but go ahead ron uh i tread lightly on the subject because i don't have any kids so i don't think people really want to get advice or a lecture from somebody that doesn't have kids because they're not in the same shoes. So I try to tread lightly here. Uh, it depends on the relationship. Like if it's my niece or nephew acting up, I'll probably have a talk with them. But if it's someone other than that, I won't say anything. It's not my, it's not my place. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree with DJ and Danny. <clears throat> it's always okay to reprimand other people's kids. In fact, I reprimand other people's kids when they don't even need to be reprimanded. It's a power thing. You have to exert your power over other people. If you don't exert your power over other people, they will eventually exert it over you. And so me, I like to train them at a young age that I am the power. I am the powerful one. You listen to me. I am the one that makes the rules. And if you do that, eventually all the old people are gonna die and then you have a bunch of people that think you're super powerful. Jeez. And that's what I want. That's the world I wanna live in. So I reprimand your kids. You guys don't know it, but I'm doing it left and right. I'm telling them, you know, be easy, sleazy. And that's that's the bottom line, baby. All right. That's the note we're ending this this podcast on right there. You want to keep going? You, what else grinding your gears here, DJ? Go ahead. I mean, the the list is unlimited. We're already we're already an hour and thirty deep. All right. What, what what do you want? What do you want to talk about? We got we got some time. No, I don't think I, I'm already sweating. If I'm sweating, these big sweaty sweat. Man, I'm ready. <laughs> I got this this bright light bouncing off the ball down here. It's killing me. I'm glad someone mentioned big sweaty. I was waiting for it. All right. So thank you again, everyone, for viewing. Except Drew Brees, we still hate you, and we're glad that you lost to the Raiders in in pathetic fashion. You were terrible with all those turnovers. So you stink. Uh, but everyone else, uh, especially Ariana Grande, we love you. And, uh, you know, we'll see you next week or two weeks from now. We're off next week. <laughs>
See you, see you. Take care.